Welcome everyone. I'm Dr. Thomas Kalavala, the session host for Dr. Elaine Strakoda and Dr. Christian Oros presentation, MATC Open Access Marketing, Building Awareness and Promoting Over a Million Dollars in Student Savings. The Wisconsin Open Education Symposium is committed to being a safe, accessible, equitable, and inclusive environment for all. Our code of conduct is in effect during this session and in all conference spaces. Please take a moment to reflect on how your actions can build up our open education community and support diverse voices. This session is being recorded and will be captioned for future viewing. Thanks for joining us today. Take it away, Dr. Christian Nora and Dr. Elaine Strakoda. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Thomas. Thomas. Uh, please see if you go to the next slide. Um, this slide here is an overview of Milwaukee Area Technical College. We want to talk about our OER initiatives, how we promote awareness. But before we do it, I want to share with you a little bit about our college. You can see here from the slide that we have four campuses. Downtown is our largest campus. We have a North Campus, which is in Mequon, a South Campus located in Oak Creek, and then our West Dallas Campus is obviously in West Dallas. We are a large technical college. We offer over 170 associate degree, diploma, certificate, and apprenticeship programs. Um, MATC serves more than 30,000 students per year, and it is the largest technical college in Wisconsin. 57% of our students are students of color. 90% of our students are part time. And our student population, the demographics is quite interesting. Um, the majority of them work part time or full time and have family responsibilities. And adding to that on their plate, many of them are also low income students. So there's always a challenge that way for our students, and therefore making college affordable at least by minimizing the cost of textbooks is critical, uh, which speaks to the value of OER. We um, have eight academic and career pathways within our college as far as the organizational structure, which I'll talk about in the next slide. And we have um, approximately 3,565 sections of courses that we offer each semester, which does make it a little bit easier for us to uh, promote over $1 million in student savings because of the size of our college. So I wanted to speak to sizes of colleges though. Large is great. We are close to that in that we have many talented um, faculty. We have many resources. Um, but a problem of being a large college is that sometimes promoting awareness and change can be slow in large institutions. And so communication, if you if you work within a large institution, you know how much or how important it is for communication to be very open and very frequent. Um, Christia, if you can go to the next slide. The next slide shows our organizational structure and it is one of a guided pathway model. You see a business and uh, management pathway, a creative arts pathway, a gen ed pathway, Christia teaches uh, English within the gen ed pathway, the healthcare pathway, um, I am the OER facilitator for the healthcare pathway and I teach in that pathway. We have a manufacturing, construction, and transportation pathway, um, community and human services, a STEM pathway, and an employer and community educational services. And Christia is the OER facilitator for that pathway. Um, what's unique to our college is that of, of April of 21, our college created the position of OER facilitator. Um, unique to this structure is that we have a part time faculty member on, you know, assigned to each of the pathways. Um, the OER facilitator works with faculty. And very much of a peer to peer uh, model as far as the relationship. Um, the college has demonstrated support for OER through these positions, and that they have allocated six and a half hours per week for facilitators to work with faculty and to do many other administrative tasks. Um, if you don't have that kind of model, you might consider 
about it as far as having a model where you have actually a faculty or a peer to peer kind of relationship. Um, it's been very effective in the non college. Uh, Christia, if you want to go to the next slide. So, some of the early promoting and marketing of OER at college is that one of the first things that happened is that we established an open access team. And um, the gentleman that introduced us, Thomas Kalua, is actually the chair of our open access team. He uh, teaches in the biological sciences area, specifically anatomy and physiology. The team is represented by administrators in the college, um, the special needs department has an individual on this, uh, in, in this open access team, uh, a, a librarian, a bookstore manager, an instructional scheduler is part of this team, and then of course the OER facilitators. The purpose is to promote growth and awareness of OER across the college. And we plan different initiatives and different events throughout the, the college. We meet on a monthly basis. Now, one of the other things that we've done is we've also dedicated a specific email address to OER, again, another way to promote and make OER visible. We've also joined CCC OER. And the CCC OER is actually the Community College Consortium for Open Educational Resources. Uh, they promote OER through their webinar offerings and through OER global conferencing. And, and Christia will take you to that website and talk a little bit more about that. We also, as you can see on this um, on the, this slide, we have a specific OER uh, MAPC Open Educational Resource um, logo we developed. And again, just to make us visible. I talked about the facilitators. Uh, it is very much a faculty driven model um, that we're really pretty proud of. And then the other thing is the OER webpage. Um, the library webpage has an area specific to OER and it will talk about introduction to OER, how to evaluate OER, uh, finding OER resources and funding opportunities. Um, just recently, um, there's a section added for students on the library webpage, and then OER um, semester newsletter that is offered. And all of this, again, is a way to promote awareness and growth of OER at our large college. So with the next slide, Christina will walk through the library webpage and will showcase the library webpage. So, <clears throat> Here is our library webpage, um, which is our OER webpage. It is, it is through the libraries. You can see us through the Milwaukee Area Technical College libraries, but it is our own page where we post um, information to advertise and promote um, open education resources throughout the college. Um, and you guys can see this well? I just wanna make sure. Yes. Okay. So you can see we have different tabs that pull out. These are the main pages that we have. Um, I recently became in charge of the website as well as the newsletter. Um, we had a wonderful librarian who did all of this work um, before this and um, she retired recently. So my job was expanded a little bit. And so we still are working on updating things, but it, I think looking at the sections that we have is really important. So as Elaine said, we have a section called Intro to OER, which provides the basic definition for open education resources so that people understand what it is along with the citation. We have the CCC OER website that Elaine mentioned. And since she said I was gonna show it off to you, I'll just click on it quickly. Um, you guys are probably already familiar with it, but here's CCC OER. And then it has right away a job opportunity if anyone's looking for a job and then conference information, webinar series. This is what we try to advertise um, to our faculty every time there is one um, coming up. For example, we had faculty at the um, interactive session that is very relevant to the one we're talking about here. It's worth watching this one because it's very relevant to our discussion about how we've been working on faculty buy-in at MATC specifically. Um, and then coming up is the designing courses. So we have that link right away. Um, we have OER starter kit and some key, you know, 
sites that people can look over OER myths. There's the keynote speak from 20, speech from 2021 that talks about OER um, and links along with videos that are very visible, the five R's of OER. And then this is a newsletter that is um, available. Not our, it's not our newsletter, so I'll probably work on that. What is open pedagogy as a visual and then Really important, if you have questions, we email oer at matc.edu, which is that dedicated email that Elaine was talking to you about. So a compact amount of over, overall information. Um, evaluating and uh, adapting OER, it talks about the five steps to OER material, you know, is to review the materials. So we've got criteria and sort of the, the main steps to getting there, along with the video and how to modify how we attribute, attribute and um, curriculum approval and delivery. So that's all on one page. Finding OER, which is usually the key question of our faculty. There's a many different ones. Um, we have Oasis listed right first. So the way the website works, if you're on a phone, it's gonna go through the first column first, then the second column, then the third as you're scrolling down. Um, so the first thing you're going to see is the library tools, then OASIS is our first one listed. And then a discipline directory, Maryland open source, these textbooks, um, access. And then other open course enrollment, um, including the MIT open courseware and other fields. You can see, we don't have too much on this page. We're trying not to overwhelm our faculty at the same time. We do want to show that there's a big depth and breadth of information out there. Um, for finding their OER resources. And there's that opening here that um, refers to all of these things. And then additional resources are Open Education Week that recently came and other information about open education. Um, this actually does need to be updated, but it has our WTCS Open Education uh, Research Symposium from last year. And so we go through um, various resources. And last but not least, some funding opportunities. There's going to be a new OER grant coming up for fall and spring. Um, and we'll be giving that information as well as grant opportunities through WTCS. Um, so we, we have that here too. Now, new to our website, these have been here since I think the first year. Um, they've been around for a long time, those five sections. When I was hired in the summer of 2021, we added a newsletter. So you can find our newsletter archives and scroll through those and our major events. So our first one was in September and we provided information about our the symposium and other major things. And then we started moving to a semester model. So you'll see the, there were four newsletters that first semester and we decided monthly was a bit too frequent. So we moved to a semester long newsletter and we started the faculty feature um which actually when was the first one um elaine was one of our first faculty features so we had one in december of 2021 i think i have thomas here yeah so we started in in, in that fall 2021 we decided it was a really good idea to pull out our faculty who are using oer and we started with our the the chair of our of our part of our um committee which is Thomas Kalua, and he, we featured him and what he's doing here, our OER series information. We had a very busy semester that semester, and I started pulling also when I created these newsletters from the MHEC newsletter, which if you have not signed up for, I highly recommend. There's a lot of information about regional, um, national, and international opportunities, and so I pull those opportunities as well as our local information from there. Um, and as we moved into fall and spring of last semester, last year, we have our feature of Dina Borosenko, who actually um, is someone who is really active in getting OER um, up and running at the beginning, at the very beginning of our of our work in OER. And we have our grant recipients here and other key information um, from that, and then. Here's this newsletter from last semester where we have our whole um, 
Zerd course advertised. The faculty feature was a video now. We've moved to videos because we think we found they were more interactive. So we have Thomas Hazlitt as our faculty feature now with a video that people can watch. Um, and our entire presentation from our, um, our MATC day, we did over a million dollars saved like this project, except we were talking about, we were celebrating what we've done so far with faculty and students talking and administrators talking about what OER means to MATC. And we advertised this broadly, which I'll talk about a bit more. Again, we use as an opportunity to advertise our grant recipients. Um, and then I, those things I pull out from MATC and sometimes other sources as well. But I, I pull in and I pull in the visuals because it's a newsletter. So I don't just, um, the new MATC newsletter tends to just be like, link brief description link brief description link and i pull out those visuals and bring them into this newsletter so that it's a little more engaging and interactive and people hopefully are more likely to click um, all the faculty and staff looking at this are more likely to click and i include from the mhc the recently re published research um, and when i went to semester-wide model i do all the prior months and combine them into one list so you can see that that is an action for this fall newsletter this semester and we um, are advertising, we presented again at MATC day, and I have that link there. Keynote speaker for today was our faculty feature for the semester. So Paul Carrier did a fantastic interview um, with me talking about his work in OER for the college. And I, re I showed this one again, because so, I wanted to make sure the faculty see it from last semester. And then our work here, the fact that we're presenting, we advertised it here as well as in a couple other places that I'm going to talk to you about in a minute. Um, and then I included our international and national opportunities, recent publications. Sometimes when I see there's a nice list of recent publications in OER, I will pull them out and you can see I tried to put covers here. So it registers for people. These are, you know, nicely published academic books that are worth taking a look at for our classes. So um that is our website in in sum and before i move on to the next thing as i switch back to our slide deck does anyone have any questions or something they want me to focus on or pull out <laughs> and those of you who are looking at the chat you can let me know that now too because i can't see the chat So my role, I'm not only a pathway facilitator for um, community education, but I am, I am the, I was hired to do marketing for our group as well. And then I work with the marketing, I work with Thomas and the marketing department at MATC to, for, for the kinds of publications that they do, like handouts and such. Any questions? Do you see any, Elaine, Thomas? No question, Ed. Okay. All right, so I'll stop, share this, and then reshare with the PowerPoint. So we put, just in case we were having technical issues, we put um, screenshots of these pages here, but we're gonna just fly right through those because I just went over them in the actual website. So in order to promote and market OER at MATC, we not only have created this very comprehensive website that includes a semester a semester by semester newsletter. Um, we also are making sure to get emails um, into people's email boxes via multiple avenues. So, as we were saying, we have faculty driven um, facilitators for each pathway, and each of us are responsible to send out emails to our pathways and to our lead faculty within those pathways. Um, about important updates and information and how to make sure that when classes are being um, put into the roster, that if they're OER, that they're marked accordingly. We have, um, Elaine had mentioned, we have no cost and low cost, I think, already, or we'll be saying it soon, where low cost is 50 and under. That was a decision that we spent a long time thinking about and researching, and we decided to go with $50 and under for a low cost course or a no cost course, whereas there's no textbook cost at all. And so we, we spend a lot of time emailing within our pathways, but then we also email throughout the, um, throughout the faculty regarding 
all kinds of events, international events like CCOER Global, the o Open Education Conference, webinar series, and other things, uh, things that are announced through, you know, that are super, that pull out from MHEC is something people need to know. Um, so we have regional, we have local, regional, national, and international, actually, things that we pull out, the, the highlights of, that I, I, I pull out and I create like a one paragraph model blurb that I send out then to the week ahead, which is our MATC weekly marketing communications. Um, and so then they have like a MATC section with our logo, and then they put out that little paragraph, which I put hyperlinks in, including to our newsletter, to key things so that people know what's going on. Hopefully we have some of those members in our audience right now. And um, we also promote OER through the Center of Teaching Excellence newsletter. Um, they also, they, they publish bi-weekly and they will pull out things that we're doing and, and take that paragraph and put that in. And then a third way that has developed um, more recently, because one of our facilitators actually works on the newsletter for the union is the union also advertises our activities, but it's also, you know, the union is about helping the students save money um, as well as supporting its faculty and staff. So the union has a scholarship for students called the FAST Fund. And so advertising OER courses follows right in line in all, all our OER events and things. It, it falls right in line with the, the um, philosophy and, and what the union would like to promote as well. So that's the things that we send to. Um, some total, this is actually you, uh, Elaine. Okay. So some total, <laughs> some total is another marketing um, strategy that we have. Some total is actually um, our faculty quality assurance uh, area where we um, place all of our continuing ed and as part of our coaching system that we have. Well, when brand new faculty are hired, they have to go through a whole series of courses and videos, etc. But one of the videos that we added is an introduction to OER. So, so we thought that if our brand new faculty got an orientation to OER, it would help again as a, another promotional uh, way and making a, a, a increasing awareness. Um, Thomas offers a ZERD 209 class. It's called Exploring Open Educational Resources. And um, this course is for any faculty, but it is primarily uh, also taken, I would say, by faculty that um, have been OER recipient um, grants, grant recipients. And we offer, we have offered in about the last two years a small uh, $750 grant, but it certainly helps as far as supporting OER. And those uh, teachers start by taking this course. It gives them an um, Introduction to OER again, like the web page that Krista just walked through, but uh, Thomas's course goes in in greater depth, and they have to identify which course do they think they would convert from their traditional textbook to OER as part of the uh, major project in the class. Now, if your um, college doesn't have something like this as a resource, I will be putting in the chat a link to the OpenRN initiative to Chippewa Valley Technical College because they offer open to any college um, a course very similar to this where it talks about OER and then as it, yesterday's workshop also helped those, those that were present for that, helped people to learn about OER, get them started as far as how to navigate and find resources, but it's, it's, it is time consuming and it is a process. So having resource people or a course or Vince at Chippewa Valley Technical College teaches it. He's going to have three sections um, of this course opened up, one in November. Uh, I believe there's going to be one in um, January and one in February. So I will place that link into the chat for you. Um, the next slide, Christia, if we go to that. Christy alluded to this. Some of the activities we've done over the last three years at MHTC and we started out with, um, you can see one that says OER series session one, the why, the how, and the what. It was our first kickoff as far as trying to educate our um, faculty and anyone who wanted to attend as far as what OER is. It was positively received so that in 2022, we decided we would take a much bigger approach and we did a week-long OER fest 
it was um, a lot of planning and a lot of coordinating, a lot of meetings, and it was a, a positive uh, event in that we had um, a keynote speaker for one of the days. Uh, one of the days we had vendors that showcased different OER textbooks and resources. We had a vendor from OpenStax, uh, one from LibreTech, one from Xanadu. We had EBSCO uh, as far as another resource. And then our MHCC librarians showcased the library uh, we our web page. We also had daily activities where we um, had a presentation followed by some simple quiz questions. And then those that got the highest score on the quiz got uh, um, access to some uh, MATC spirit wear in the bookstore. So again, it was all different ways to try to promote OER. Um, in 2023, uh, as you can see, it says celebrating three years of OER at MATC. And this is where we talked about saving over $1 million in student savings. And I, I would add that that was such a amazing uh, pan because we had a panel filled with administrators, our faculty, um, our students spoke about it too and how it made a difference in their lives. It was such a great session. It was. Um, we actually had uh, different courses showcased. We had uh, English as a second language. We really wanted a broad representation. I presented a medical terminology um, OER that I had been working on, and Roy Zelinsky did present it as well as far as what we were doing at the state level. And you heard Ellen Range speak this morning as far as that. She was a keynote speaker talking about the medical terminology OER that was created uh, across the state and is available worldwide, actually. We had an economics teacher present, the food sciences presented, uh, culinary, uh, Pat, uh, Paul Courier, who was a, another a keynote speaker today, presented on his program in one of his courses. Uh, we had leadership development and then electrical concepts. So we really tried to cover broad base from gen ed all the way to the trades area. And it, it was really very well received. I presented on comp too, on, on composition, on you, uh, having OER in a composition course too. Oh, that's right. Okay. Yeah. So, I, you know, it's gen ed representation and broad based representation. Yeah. Um, it, was a, it was a wonderful session, which is why I put it in two newsletters. <laughs> but yeah. Is, so everyone who hasn't seen it yet. Hey, Christine and Elaine, this is a five minutes reminder. Okay. Uh, and so then, um, just recently, um, Thomas, we had a, an OE, uh, MATC day where Thomas spoke and he addressed the, the grant opportunity that's going to be happening at the state level. If you could admit, okay, you're at this slide. Um, this is what Christy addressed. This mm -hmm. is our way to educate our students as far as how to register for classes that are no cost or low cost. And they go through self service and they can click on that red area there. It's a filter and they can actually select no cost textbook courses or low cost textbook courses. It gives them the option to decide where do what course section do I possibly want to take. And as Christy said, we've worked with our lead faculty to develop uh, and labeling as far as our cost courses, as far as uh, no cost or low cost are those textbooks under $50. We try to work with our advisors so they are aware of this as well when they counsel our students. So with and that, the handout we've created from that, um, which if we have time, I'll show at the end, um, is going to be going, it, there's gonna be piles of handouts for the students to be with their advisors, to be with, um, to be in, in the registration sections, to be in all the pertinent areas across campus. Am I working on this one, yep, Elaine? Got those. Yeah. Um, so why we also worked this past summer to create handouts. We are in the process of working with marketing. So that's why I said there's a final copy. We had our rough copy and then we have our final copy uh, that'll be done through marketing. And some of that is still in process, but we created handouts that we are coordinating now with marketing to um, be able to share with uh, faculty, to have faculty hand handouts and to have student handouts that will share with people um, share with the faculty and to share with students about OER and and why we should learn more about OER. So we wanted to just have things that could go up like on those screens where you have across campus and there's a brief thing and you can get the main points. 
um, as well as like things that could be put up as as posters all around um, pertinent areas and departments and so on. So this first one that we created together was why use open education resources in our courses. And we want to increase student centered pedagogy and engagement, promote diversity, equity and inclusion, decrease student education costs, and it incorporates the most up to date information. So we tried to pull out the most important things. And then put, you know, use different colors and graphics, and then we have a QR code that brings people to learn more about it. Um, and then we created a student brochure to like, are you paying more than $50 for textbooks? Why don't you learn more about low cost and no cost courses? And we have the student website linked to this QR code. Um, and then to learn more, and, and, and this is sort of a really brief version of how to sign up for those courses, we provide this as well as, um, you know, if this is sent out by email, there is a um, week ahead for students as well. They could uh, cl click on that link. Um, and another student brochure is to save money. Um, OER saves students money. Are you paying more than $50 for textbooks? Um, you can pay nothing or pay less than $50. Here are your options and let's learn more about it. So we created those and we actually gave those as handouts to be shared with you all, um, including this brochure. Um, concerned about the rising cost of textbooks on that student website, by the way, in open education resources, there's an article that talks about how um, textbooks have been going up. They're, they're going up 7 times the rate of inflation. So, you know, that's something to be concerned about. So there's articles and information on this student website to help students, um, which I actually realized I didn't quite show you yet. So if we have time, we'll go back and show you that student website. We have 1 more minute Christian. Well, then I won't have time unless someone asks about it. <laughs> so working committee, uh, do you want to finish this off? Elaine. This one's yours. Yeah, it is. Okay. Working committee develops. So we developed the OER marketing posters for faculty website work with marketing department at MATC. We continue to focus on benefits of OER and promote awareness. The grant, um, the WTCS grant is going to be a moving force in OER development, which we're trying to tell our, you know, share with our faculty development is a super important part of this process. If you have a course and none of those books fit, what are you using? Can you make your own? You know, and that's something we, you know, Elaine has already done with creating the, the medical terminology, helping create the medical terminology book um, materials. So. So far, over a million dollars in student savings have happened in by 2022, and we're continuing that. We want that to continue exponentially. We want to save our students a lot of money. Um, and so we need to continuously, is this one you? <laughs> okay, we need to continuously promote awareness among faculty, so, students, are, and staff. OER has not been without some challenges, of course. We need yeah. to continuously, and the word is continuously, promote awareness among our faculty and students. And, you know, perhaps our students might be one of the best driving forces behind OER as far as promoting OER and encouraging faculty to also, when they have a course that uses an OER, that they may also encourage faculty to say, I wish this class had an OER as well. So continuously trying to get buy-in. We've had early adopters. We've had those that have struggled with wanting to change because they do like the current textbook, and I understand that. Um, I would have to say the biggest thing today is that um, one of the faculty, some of the issues of the faculty also sometimes thinking OER would not have the same rigor. And I think we need to understand that the OER, when you look for OER, make sure it is peer reviewed. A good example of that is the wonderful leadership of OpenRN in the state of Wisconsin. Um, they actually received the, o, the OE Award for Excellence for, um, from the OER Award for Excellence from OE Global, which really speaks to the state of Wisconsin um, and the work by Kim Ernstmeyer. Um, hey. I, hey. Christia, I'm so sorry. We are uh, about one minute above the limit. Um, can we give some time for questions now? Absolutely. So, just to finish up, we continually do um, additional marketing, also because we're constantly having new faculty and new students who need information, as well as people who still need to know it. And I love what uh, Elaine was sharing about OpenRN. I mean, what an amazing award for OpenRN to get. Um, and that's. I have, I have a chat from Eric. Okay. I have asked our student government association to ask students in OER courses to write thank you letters to their professors. <laughs> That's a great idea. 
Yeah, yeah, I like that a lot. I mean, Any I other questions? We, you may also put your questions in the chat. The reason we have the state grant, I think, is really because of the spirit, the, the leadership of our students speaking uh, to government officials for the need for OER. Um, so the WTCS uh, $3 million grant will be certainly an incentive for many of our faculty to continue to move forward with the OER. Uh, this is, I think, Arkansas Community College that created a, a series of advertisements that I, I managed to find some visuals. So they they had students who did these little whiteboards. With the money I spent on textbooks, I could have. <laughs> or the money I saved on textbooks, I did. They had I a, nice a series. Sorry about that. I have another question. Okay. Excellent, excellent marketing campaign. Who leads the effort? Um, I would say... Thomas and I, he hired me too. So <laughs> <laughs> we all work together, though. We have a great it's, team. It's a, it's a team effort, Eric. You know, so basically, uh, all different departments. You know, so we are not artists. So we provide our ideas to marketing. They they polish it, and um, even you know, we get ideas from the students. So okay. that helps us to create our goals, and uh, we work on it, and we we try to reach all different departments uh, in different ways. So like. Elaine and uh, Dr. Akrusia said it's a continuous effort in different ways. Mm -hmm. Eric's a great presentation. Thanks. So um, we are three minutes above the limit. If you have any questions, please, uh, their email addresses are there. Uh, Dr. Krusia Noro, Dr. Elaine Strakota, thank you so much for your time and providing us with this great presentation. And uh, thank you everyone for attending this. Uh, if you have any questions, please uh, reach out to us. Uh, we are more than happy to answer your questions. Thanks everyone. Uh, Liana said, thank you, Christian and Elaine. That was awesome. Are you eating by ourselves now? Greg, um, thank you all for excellent information. So I'm going to stop recording, okay? Thomas.